Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Jade Alberts from Calgary, Alberta. I'm a business strategist, influencer, and brand builder. My passion is helping small businesses grow and succeed. Sharing knowledge and stories is why I started the Telling It Like It Is Facebook Live show. It is live. If you have any questions, please ask them. We will answer. If you're watching this after the fact on another social media channel, throw your questions out there. We will answer them. Today's Telling It Like It Is guest is Ryan Hutchinson of ACAMP. Ryan, thank you for joining me. Pleasure to be here, Jade. Uh, you're frozen right now, so I'm not sure if how this is coming across right now, but uh, uh, <laughs> thanks for having me. And I've, I've seen a lot of your uh, other speakers on here, so I'm hoping I can continue that good tradition of, of very informative interviews. Oh, no, no, absolutely. I mean, I I guess, you know, when it comes to A Camp, I was introduced when you and I kind of reconnected again. We grew up uh, in the same small town. We, where our age differences were a little bit, but I was friends with your brothers. And then we reached out on LinkedIn and had a coffee. And and I have just been fascinated by uh, by the world of A Camp. I, I just think it's Alberta's hidden gem, it's hidden secret. And uh, I am excited to share, uh, share that story. Excellent. Looking forward to it. Oh, for sure. So we'll do a quick little introduction here about Ryan, and then we will get into it. So Ryan it works with ACAMP, who focuses on electronics, hardware, firmware, sensors, and embedded systems. They are the only advanced technology product development group in Canada that provides a full range of support at each stage of the product development process. I think it's just, as I said before, it's Alberta's hidden gem. I just can't believe the stuff you've done and the stuff that you are working on right now. So why don't you explain to us exactly what ACAMP does? Well, you know, it's tough to put it in a nutshell. You kind of have to look at it from a few different perspectives. I think um, one of the main ways we kind of help people is that we sort of help stretch dollars and shorten timelines essentially okay. for anyone who's trying to develop a technology, right? Okay. And how we do that was we have multidiscipline um, engineers. We have 400 pieces of tools and equipment, and we can kind of help you get through any stage in your process, um, either from prototyping to um, testing and, and uh, developing your product, um, ruggedization it, we can miniaturize it, we can um, even do some small scale manufacturing. So. Um, when you think about all those different areas, when you're starting to develop a new technology, like who do you hire? What equipment do I need? Um, do I need somebody full time or just part time? You know, what disciplines of engineering do I need? We cover all that for you and you can pick and choose from our skill sets and from our tool sets, whatever you need and how you need to get your, your, your product to market. No, and I, I and I as I as I start to learn more about uh, a camp, I think that's one of the what fascinates me the most about it is there's so many different levels that that you can tap into, and and I know it's it it is kind of a government funded organization, but you know of the people that I've talked to, you know how do how does someone go about applying to a camp? How do they qualify, or or really looking to partner with certain entrepreneurs? So first thing I'd like to do is bring you into the office or we can meet you somewhere. Um, I'll bring one of our subject matter experts in. Um, we have some guys with 30 plus years experience that have done everything. I mean, these guys are just sort of um, the creme de la creme when it comes to really tinkering and knowing how to make things work from all different areas. And so we like to have them in the meeting, um, sit down, non, no, no NDAs in place, just have a very open, honest dialogue as to what you're doing, high level. Um, we'll look at that. We'll understand what your needs are. And then we'll tell you whether or not we can handle that product for you or that that development. We'll be very upfront with you. If we don't think we have the skill sets or the knowledge in place, we won't engage with you. We won't take your money if we can't do it for you. <laughs> I think the other thing, too, is that we want to understand if there is a really a market for what you're trying to do. So we'll do a little bit of work ourselves to make sure there's something out there already or a hundred of them already. Or that, you know, really what you do have is a great new idea. And what we're trying to help is to keep those great ideas here in the province, right? So many times those great ideas just can't find that place to, to really get developed. We have great incubation um, uh, support here in the province. We have great, lots of funding um, available. 
uh, people helping with business strategies, but no one can actually really roll up their sleeves and make it work. And that's sort of the, the big hole where we fit in and help help clients with that. Oh, and I 100% agree with that statement, um, especially when uh, we are really trying to stop uh, people from leaving this province, you know, to stay here, develop here and hire here, make their head office here. We're tired of them going to Toronto or Silicon Valley or whatever it may be. Um, so, I mean, that that's, you know, kudos to ACAMP for that. Again, I'm talking to Ryan Hutchinson of ACAMP. If you want to click on their website, it is in the comment section. You can just go and it will take you right there. Um, so are there certain industries that you are focusing on or are you able to give us a few examples of some of your success stories? Yeah, absolutely. So the three areas that I'm personally focused on is oil and gas. I, previous to ACAMP, I had 15 years in the pipeline industry. And we were doing products in the upstream, midstream and downstream areas for all types of clients, startups to companies as big as Baker Hughes, we've done projects for them. But they're also looking at agriculture and then also UAVs or drones is, is the two other areas that I'm focused on primarily. But for ACAMP in total, I mean, really anything that has an electronic system, uh, small uh, electronics, um, some of the examples we've done, I'll just throw a few out there. We've miniaturized the backup camera uh, for the OEM supplier to Ford and Chevy. So that little camera you have and you put it in reverse, on your vehicle and it shows up, we yeah. miniaturized that um, from a client who had it. It was two inches by two inches by two inches. We brought it down to one by one by one and a quarter with a fisheye lens on it and then feed all that information into the, into the dashboard. Um, and then that company went off and made millions of those for Ford and Chevy. Yeah. But I think probably the best example we have here in Alberta is Hi-Fi Engineering. Um, they were uh, a couple of guys who were sourcing a uh, technology of the U.S. Halberton bought that technology. Um, what happened was they were concerned that they might lose that technology. They already had contracts in place to provide those services to uh, Enbridge, TransCanada, other pipeline companies like that. And what that product did was you lay a fiber optic cable alongside a pipeline and it can pretty much gives you eyes, ears and nose along the entire length of your system. As you can imagine, these pipelines go for thousands of kilometers they try to understand what's going on at any given point in time with measurement tools and other things. But if you have this fiber optic cable alongside of it, it's pretty much, you know, having uh, every inch of your pipeline covered. And so what they came to us and they were worried about losing that technology, they said to us, how can we, um, can, you know, this is a problem. Can you replicate this? We took a look at it. It was actually outdated technology. We actually came into us. It was a multi-year project we made it even better than it was before. Now, they went from a company who was just uh, distributing technology and, and sales to actually owning technology. And now they're a 20 person team here in Calgary, in Alberta, developing that hardware and selling it around the world. It's a world-class technology. And so that's really how we try to help companies. We don't want that technology leaving like I said before. We want people to come with us with those great ideas develop that technology, create jobs, and build that um, technology base here in Calgary for the world. And I think that was probably one of the best, most recent examples. They've had multiple awards. They've just recently raised another $10 million in funding. Um, and I know they were just in uh, Netherlands doing water pipelines. They were in South America doing a quarry mine, um, all kinds of applications for their technology. And it's done right here in Alberta. And you know, we're very proud of that. And uh, we, we look forward to doing more projects like that. <laughs> well, I mean, that's a, that's a great success story. I think that's, uh, uh, you know, kudos to you and kudos to, again, another, another way to keep people here in Calgary, keep everybody employed in this province when, you know, maybe the oil and gas might never come back to what it was before. So other than, I guess, um, you know, tech, is it, is there any reason or, or is there any other industries that you might tap into for, uh, for potential partnerships or is it really, you know, streamlined focused on, you know, technology only? Yeah, I'd say primarily technology. Um, we do try to provide some business support to some of our clients. Um, we do try to give them some, our feelings on what the market could be. Okay. Um, but really it is really primarily based on technology and, 
and improving technology. I mean, we're not going to reinvent the wheel here or yeah. build you a perpetual motion machine. You know, some things just don't exist. Yeah. But we're constantly trying to find ways to make things better. And I think that's where technology is going today. Things are getting smaller. The sensors are getting smaller. The data collection is getting much bigger, as you know, with your blockchain background. Um, and really, we're just trying to find ways for clients to really grab hold of that, that those new technologies that come to bear and build them the, the technology in order to make it a very marketable product when they go to launch it. That, I mean, that's such a, such a great point because I re realistically, you know, idea in my opinion, an idea is a starting point and for have you guys to have the background, the engineers and all different types of facets, um, you know, to come in and work with somebody to sit down with them and say, Hey, what a great idea, but what about this? How about this? And obviously the entrepreneurs and that are coming to you are, are fairly open-minded and looking for help. So, you know, I always say asking for help is not a sign of weakness. So it's really good to see these guys stepping up to the plate and you guys are able there to, uh, to help them. So I wouldn't mind touching a little bit here on your, uh, your annual report. It is in the comment section. So it is, it's there for you to click on for anybody that's watching and you want to see it. Um, why don't you share some of the results of your annual report with us? Yeah, thanks, Jay. It, it really was um, some that we were concerned about um, because in that annual report, we had a third party auditor come in and wanted to review as to what was the impact from the government money that was coming in and how, how were they getting their bang for their buck? So someone from outside government and outside ACAM came in, looked at our books over the last 10 years we've been in operation. And it actually proved to be quite surprising to us. I mean, not necessarily um, the success we had, but I think just the level and the magnitude of the success that we were able to achieve. So over the 10 years, we've, on average, we've gotten about 2 million a year from the government of Alberta. Um, I should also point out the federal government through uh, uh, Western Economic Diversification gave us also about 18 million in tools to build the facility that we have. Um, so combined about, you know, 38 to $40 million, but that government of Alberta money was very key in order to help subsidize our rates in order to keep them low so we could be profitable or I mean, be, um, economical for the, these startup organizations and entrepreneurs. Yeah. But over that 10 years, we have filed 350 patents that we don't any rights to all of our clients mm -hmm. on all the IP. Um, we have created. 150 products and of those 150 products 120 i believe or 125 have actually gone out into market and they're out there today wow. um, being sold around the world um, some other things that came out of it too was our clients have been able to um, raise through our process providing them quotes working with them to continually through the all the different phases of their project 275 million dollars from our work from investors or other government agencies, things like that. And they are now producing, or um, not producing, they are now earning over $500 million in revenues. But there's the one that I love the most is that through a $20 million investment from the government of Alberta, we have created 1,900 jobs. Wow. 1,900 jobs in this province primarily. I mean, think about that any other money that they put towards something and what kind of return have they gotten on that? Now it's here and there, like hi is a good example. There's about 18 to 20 jobs created there. But I mean, that's just 1% of it. When you think about all the other jobs that have been created. So we need to make the government aware of this. There's a new government in place. We let them know just, you know, that this is something that's very well needed in this province. Um, and it's not necessarily diversifying from oil and gas because 30 to 40 percent of our work is in improving oil and gas today. A lot of downhole tools we do, we, like I mentioned, Hi-Fi, that was directly for the pipeline industry. We also do a lot of smart pigs as well. Um, and it's just to try and continuously improving things and making things better. And that's that's really what we do here in Alberta. And that's what we do in Canada best. I think better than any other country in the world. We're constantly trying to improve things. Um, we never sit back and let things just be as they are. We're always trying to look to improve. And I think ACAMP is a great example of helping companies and helping people find those solutions to do those great things. Oh, and I, I just, you know, when I, when I, when I went over that report, I was just like, I was almost clapping, you know, 1900 jobs over, over 10 years is, is asked in my opinion, astronomical. I mean, 
you know, where, what would happen? Where would these jobs be without a camp for that matter? Right. They, they would, they probably wouldn't be here. Maybe some of them, maybe 50%, who, maybe 20%, who knows, but you know, that's revenue that's staying here, you know, contributing into back into our society throughout the province. So if anybody wants to read that report, which I highly recommend, you know, go to the comment section, click on the link and it'll take you directly to, um, uh, directly to the report. You know, one of the other things I want to briefly discuss before uh, before we end our discussion here is, you know, you guys do a lot of seminars and you have another one coming up. I attended the one on drones and and I thought that was absolutely fascinating looking at some of the, the companies that are developing this tech and how they're using it to fight fires and, and, and all this unbelievable, uh, the solutions that are being put forward. So you have one coming up on Tuesday, the 8th. Um, right. here, here in Calgary, it's an IOT. Why don't you uh, seminar? Why don't you share a little knowledge on that with us? Yeah, yeah. We're um, looking to do about three of these a year, and this will be the second one this year, and then next will be in early next year. But it's going to be on the Internet of Things. Um, we have four different areas we're going to be speaking to. We got oil and gas, of course. Um, yep. The amount of information that has been generated in the past um from oil and gas is now i think in the last five years people are really starting to understand where the value is in that and of course it being in such tight margins nowadays they're looking for one percent savings and all that so gathering that data making sense of that data is a huge part of it and we have five speakers in that area um, then we're going to be going into smart cities and we're going to be having a couple speakers in that um, and really it's just trying to understand how cities are using all this data that's coming in from all the different sensors around there around their area. But then we're also getting into medical devices as well too. We have a few clients that we're gonna be showcasing here on that. And just looking at some of the wearables and some of the other things that people are doing for testing and, and calibrating their data is uh, is also key. So it's gonna be a great day. We have um, a vice president from TELUS as well doing our keynote speak. You can just imagine how they are gonna be collecting all this data and transferring it. So he's gonna be talking about that and. I think it'll be a very informative session. We got about uh, 100 seats available. We've sold somewhere three quarters of that right now. And uh, yeah, we're looking to fill the rest of those seats here in the next week. So hope to see you guys out there. Yeah, for sure. And again, uh, the Eventbrite uh, link is in the comment section. Click on there. It's 50 bucks to attend. I mean, it's, it is $50 well spent and that gets you lunch. So realistically, it's probably free. Um, once you throw in, uh, throw in the lunch. So I highly recommend going it. It was the last one I was at was very informative. I'm looking forward to this one. So, so you sit down with a lot of, uh, you know, small businesses, a lot of ideas, a lot of startups on that side of things. And this question that I love asking is, you know, if you had one piece of advice for these guys that, you know, come to you with that, uh, with that idea, um, what would it be? Get a very, very solid business plan put together before you spend one nickel on anything. Um, as you know, Jade, there are four pillars, I like to think of it, to a, a good company, right? So first of all, you need a technology or a product, whatever you want to call it. Um, we can help with that area. But there are three other areas you really need to focus on. And maybe one other area we can kind of help out with, and that's people, good employees, right? So we can provide yeah. some of that SME experience that you may need in their developing your product. Yeah. But then you also need a good market. Really understand your market. I've seen too many times people come in with an amazing idea. I even did some consulting for a company that had an amazing drone that was world-class, unbelievable capabilities, push button, all that. But there are regulations in place that just wouldn't let them fly that drone probably for another four or five years with uh, Vivan Visual Line of Sight. And then the last thing you need is capital, right? Now we can kind of help you with that, help you raise those funds through our quotes. Um, I find that often when people go to um, investors or government funding or something like that with an ACAMP quote behind it, especially in government, because people know us quite well in government, that it gives us some weight that they know that the money is going to be spent and you actually that is how much money you actually need in order to get there. We sort of reduce risk that way with a lot of these investors. Yeah. But again, I'll go back to your original question. Just get a very solid business plan together, include all those four things. And re and then have someone vet it too. Have someone really go through it with a fine tooth comb, maybe even a couple people. And, and I'm talking friends, family, whatever, but maybe even somebody like yourself, Jade, that can come in and say, look, have you looked thought of this? Have you thought of that? Have you, have you think of this angle? Do you really have a market? Who are you gonna be hiring? You know, 
all those areas. How much do you think it's going to cost? Yeah. Right? All those real tough questions. And you got to be honest to take that. You got to be open and honest to take that feedback too. Um, you know, sometimes people have tons of money coming in here, but they want to develop a product or the way they want to develop that product, like sort of their process towards it will not work. Yeah. Um, or they may have somebody in their organization that's holding them back or, you know, there's just so many things that can happen. Um, you know, a great idea is just one part of it. You need to have all that figured out. And I think you can probably speak to that more than I can. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's as I as I said earlier, an idea is a starting point and uh, a business plan is absolutely crucial to uh, to your success. Do you, are you going to follow that plan? That business plan could pivot in, in uh, a meeting, you know, 10 seconds after a meeting with you, that business plan could be out the window and you're like, all right, here we go. We got to start over. But you know what? You got to know, you got to have a vision and, and that uh, and that starts with a plan because if you don't have that, I mean, you realistically, you, you could put yourself in a deep hole really, really fast. So no, that's, mm -hmm. that's great advice, Ryan. I, that's, uh, that's bang on. Thank you. You're welcome. No, it's been a pleasure talking to you today, Jade. Oh, I mean, it's great. I mean, I, you know, Ryan, again, with, with ACAMP, you can click on the website right in the comments section. I truly believe as I start to, to follow what ACAMP does, I just, I can't believe uh, what they do for the province of Alberta. And I highly recommend everybody uh, checking them out and, and, you know, spend $50 uh, and come to their uh, their event next Tuesday because uh, you'll be fascinated, especially when it's. I'm really looking forward to this smart cities discussion. I think that's going to be really cool. Yeah, it'll be great. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing you there next week. <laughs> Excellent. Well, again, thanks a lot, Ryan. I really appreciate it, and um, thank you to everybody for listening. And we will see you next week. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye bye.